Okay, you guys, uh, this is board problem 25. Suppose the uh, scores on an exam have a mean of 75 with standard deviation of 8. If one student has a test result with a Z score of negative 1.5 and another student has a test result with a Z score of 2.0, how many points higher was the second student result uh, than the first student? Okay, now um, uh, if you think uh, the standard deviation is 8, then negative 1.5 times 8 would be how far below it went uh, on 75. And uh, similarly, the other guy has a, a 2.0 above, so if you multiply 2.0 times 8, which is uh, 16, that would be above 75. So you, you find those two scores and then subtract them. Okay, uh, so it uh, looks like uh, 28 points, so choice E. All right. Um, okay, this is um, uh, section 5.1-1 and 1-2, and designing samples, simple random samples, and other sample designs. And uh, sorry for the length of this, you guys. I'll go kind of fast to make this video shorter. So here's some definitions. Um, uh, number one, a study of a population means that you take inventory of everybody. So if I wanted to find a study of the population at our high school, uh, I'd have to uh, get everybody at the high school, absolutely everybody. So there's over 2,000 people on this campus. So, okay, uh, Most of the times you can't take inventory of everybody, so you put a test to a sample to represent the entire population. Okay, an experiment deliberately imposes some treatments on individuals in order to, uh, to observe their responses. Okay, and then a four is continued. Experiments allow us to pin down the effects of specifics on. Uh, oops, I got to take something out here. Specifics on variables. Let me take this guy out right here. Um, this guy doesn't belong here. So, okay, take that out. All right. Um, uh, of interest to us. So they are uh, the preferred methods of gaining uh, knowledge in science, medicine, and industry. We do experiments. We're going to do experiments for the rest of this, uh, this oh, yeah, uh, the rest of this uh, textbook. Okay, and then statistical inference uh, answers specific questions with a uh, known degree of confidence, and we'll discuss that more as we get into the book. Okay, sampling involves study studying a part in order to gain information on the whole. So instead of, you know, surveying the whole campus here, I'd study a, a sample of it and, and use that for information to make inferences of our whole population. Okay, a census attempts to contact every individual in the entire population. The United States tries to take a census on the whole United States every 10 years. So back in 2010, they were taking a census and um, and they, they do their darndest to get everybody, um, uh, all the information um, uh, filled out. So they'll go door to door if they have to and knock on doors and, and get information of who lives there, how many live there, and, and so on. So, so taxing purposes, so like for roads and schools and stuff, they want to know who's living in, in what communities. Anyway, okay, uh, number eight, the design of a sample refers to the methods uh, used to choose the sample from a population. Poor sampling design uh, can produce misleading conclusion. We'll see examples. Okay, the advantages of sampling are uh, you can get the data quicker. Uh, it's less expensive because it takes less time uh, and often more accurate than a census. Uh, for, so here's an example, you guys. You don't have to write this down. You can if you wish. Uh, attempting to count every last item in a warehouse would cost too much money, or too much time, which equals money, uh, along with the fact by counting everything it would become super boring and bored people tend to make more mistakes. No kidding. Um, okay, uh, so here's section B, helping welfare mothers, mothers find jobs. And this is uh, example 5.1 on page 270. Most adult recipients on welfare are mothers of young children. Observational studies of welfare mothers show that many are able to increase their earnings and leave the welfare system. Some take advantage of voluntary job training programs to improve their skills. Should participation in job training and job search programs be required of all able body welfare mothers? Some think so. Uh, observational studies cannot tell us whether the effects of such a policy would, would, uh, such a policy would be, even if the mothers uh, studied are uh, properly chosen sample of all the welfare recipients, 
Those who seek out training and find, find jobs may differ in many ways from those who do not. They are not observed to have. Uh, they are observed to have more education, for example, but they uh, may also differ in values of motivation and things that cannot be observed. Okay, so uh, to see if a required job program will help mothers escape welfare, such programs must be actually tried. So this is what you do: you choose two similar groups of mothers uh, when they apply for welfare, and require one group to participate in a job training program but do not offer the program to the other group and then so this would be your experiment and by comparing the income and the work record of the two groups after several years uh, it will show you whether the required training has a desired effect so sometimes these uh, uh, these experiments uh, take many years to uh, uh, come to fruition on that okay so here's call in opinion polls uh, this is example 5-2 on page 272 uh, TV news programs like to conduct call-in polls of public opinion. The program announces a question and asks viewers to call a, a telephone number uh, to respond yes and another to respond no. Now it's texting, but uh, back when this book was made, it's telephones. Telephone companies charge for these calls. Uh, the ABC network program Nightline once asked uh, whether the United Nations should continue to have its headquarters in the United States. And there were more than 186,000 callers. Uh, they responded and said 67% said no, they didn't want the United Nations uh, left in the United States. That was shocking. But what happens, you guys, is people who tend in, uh, who spend the time and money to respond to call-in polls are not uh, the representation of the entire uh, adult population. In fact, they tend to be the same people who call radio talk shows. People who feel strongly, especially with strong negative opinions, are more likely to call. It is not surprising that a, a properly designed sample showed that 72% of adults want uh, the UN to stay uh, in the United States. For example, you guys, uh, say you go to a restaurant and they have a, a suggestion box. Well, who do you think fills out those suggestions and puts them in the suggestion boxes? Those people that have a strong negative opinion are more inclined to fill that out. If you had a good time, you get up and leave. And so, so uh, uh, it's it's you know for the um, uh, the ones, the voluntary ones, uh, they're not really good representations. All right, I'm going to stop right here just for the length of this, and we'll continue this on, on the next one, okay?